Unless you're a super video nerd, chances are the only time you're worried about codecs is when you can't open something you downloaded in VLC player, so it won't make much sense when I say that the video encoding world is in the middle of a transition right now. On one side you have the tried and tested H.264, the AVC implementation that most video sources including Blu-rays and DVDs have been using for a while now, and likely what you're using if you've ever streamed using OBS or XSplit. H.264 has ruled the roost and is easy enough to encode and decode, and has modern enough file sizes that it can be used for pretty much everything. So what's the problem? The problem is it's 2017 and the number of people who create and consume 4K content is higher than ever and online video content platforms, including Netflix and YouTube, support 4K resolution and encourage creators to make use of it. But 4K has traditionally been a little bit of a black sheep in the online video world. Having four times the number of pixels as 1080p is fine on paper, but when people on the move want to watch shiny 4K Netflix on the new Ultrabook's high resolution display, the problem becomes apparent. And Intel have addressed it to some extent, with the internal graphics on their processors and the recent controversy of 4K Netflix being limited to their new line of Kaby Lake processors, presumably due to the new integrated graphics being the only one that's strong enough to support it. But what about devices that don't always have access to Wi-Fi? We already know that the Samsung Galaxy S8 with the Snapdragon 835 supports up to 4 4K 60fps playback, as well as hardware support for the VP9 and H.265 codecs. What this means is that more than ever, content providers are having to think about what video codec will work best for certain use cases, and with bandwidth caps being tested in several markets in the US, it's in their best interest to find a solution sooner rather than later. Enter HEVC and VP9. HEVC, also known as H.265, or the High Efficiency Video Codec, developed by the guys who brought you the MP4 container, is the proprietary codec that's the current king of providing high quality video at a tiny file size. For reference, HEVC claims to use as little as 50% of the data as H.264 to achieve the same quality. And on the other hand, there's VP9, the open, royalty-free alternative that Google has been trying to promote the last few years, which claims to deliver 60% lower file sizes than its predecessor VP9. Eight. Now all this sounds great in isolation, but it's the context that makes the new generation video codecs a little harder to swallow. The complexity of these codecs is what makes them have all these smaller file sizes, but also makes encoding take that much longer. There's no easy way to fix that problem outright, but with the right settings we can arrive at a setting that gives quality equal to a much larger file and which would, in theory, work better for the lower bitrate video that platforms like YouTube make use of. I decided to try and test out working these codecs into my workflow in Adobe Premiere using FNord's Adobe WebM plugin, which you can download using the link in the description. First, I tried exporting a project file about 15 minutes with some color correction and a few titles and additional audio tracks using VP9 with VBR 1 pass and a bitrate of 10 megabits per second. With these settings, Adobe Media Encoder showed the estimated time came in at a little over 6 hours, making it nearly 5 hours longer than an H.264 export. However, the file size was a little over 1 gig and is less than half the size of my usual RAW file, which came in at 2.7 gigs. The real story is that VP9 does not seem to be at the level of optimization that H.264 and HEVC are at. During the render, the CPU usage fluctuated between 19 and 100%, with 3 of the 12 available threads on the processor having much less utilization than the others. While this is a vast improvement over earlier versions of the codec, the 2014 version was notoriously single-threaded by the way, but it's still a long way behind where the proprietary codecs are at. HEVC, on the other hand, is a much more interesting option. Although I had to upgrade my software to the 2017 version, of Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Media Encoder, which are the only versions that support HEVC natively, the encoding times are much more reasonable while still providing reasonable file size reduction. In the test file I exported using HEVC, I used VBR 1 pass with a 13 megabit per second bitrate and a maximum bitrate of 16 megabits. The file size of this export came in at 1.3 gigs, which is a full 50% lower than the H.264 encoded file, which only makes sense because of the proportionately lower bitrate. Another thing to note is that the HEVC implementation in Adobe Media Encoder doesn't support two-pass encoding, probably because it would create encode times that are too long to be usable, but it would have been nice to have the option. The real story is the encoding time. You'll recall that the H.264 export came in at a render time of around one and a half hours, and like magic, the HEVC encode came in at three hours, 15 minutes, which is by no means fast, but neither is it very slow, like VP9. Given that this project encode is in 1080p and a 4K export would probably take a lot longer, HEVC is by no means perfect. But at 4K, HEVC should really shine with its lower file sizes and comparable quality. So what does this all mean? 
VP9 takes nearly twice as long to encode and has comparable file sizes to HEVC. Well, in the end, it all comes down to the quality of the final product. Let's take a look at how HEVC stacks up against our reference H.264 export. Here we have H.264 on the left and HEVC on the right. As expected, they are pretty much comparable in terms of number of video artifacts and overall sharpness. Now let's add in VP9. And it's the same. So in the end, it's all about how easily you can incorporate these codecs into your workflow and whether the type of content you work with justifies extra encoding time in exchange for higher quality at a lower bitrate. If you're heavily into 4K content, for example, and have trouble getting good enough quality at the low bit rates that YouTube supports, then HEVC could really help you out. As for the matchup between the two, I'd prefer HEVC over VP9 any day of the week. It produces lower file sizes, it is much more multi-threaded, and already has a native implementation in my workflow, but the same might not be true for you. Anyway, while Google have been talking up their royalty-free codecs for a couple of years now, and have been trying to get support from browsers and content platforms for it, the average content creator does not really need to use VP9 at this moment, and it's still not ready to be used as a viable alternative to the tried and tested codecs that we all know and love, and as of right now, is clearly second fiddle to the proprietary HEVC codec. But with the improvements that have been made to VP9 over the last two years, maybe next year it'll be a different story. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.